welcome to Under the Birch Tree. Um, this will never feel natural to me. This is a podcast about knitting and um, crochet, eventually some sewing. Actually, there's no crochet today, so it's just knitting today. Um, welcome, warm welcome back to everybody who is watching and has watched before. I'm really, really pleased that there's people who are enjoying this podcast. Um, I'd really love to connect with viewers of the podcast. Um, and thank you, welcome to anybody new as well. It's really nice to have you and, um, and look forward to connecting with you as well. You can find me on Instagram as birchtree underscore knit and on Ravelry as under the birch tree, which has got capitals for all the words, but um, no spaces. So um, I've got quite a few things to talk to you about today. I've got some finished objects, which is really exciting. Um, I've got um, some works in progress, um, some acquisitions and what I'm going to knit next. I've also, if there's time, I've got a couple of past projects that, to show that relate to one of my finished objects this time. So let's start. First of all, my finished objects. I'm very excited about these because I felt like I didn't really have much to show last time. Last time I'd been knitting a baby sweater that hadn't been working at all, um, so I was a bit disappointed with it, but I have regrouped myself, and last time I showed you the sleeves and the beginning of this gorgeous little tiny, teeny tiny newborn sweater. <laughs> this is the Icefall sweater by um, Tin Can Knits, and I've knit it with Drops Alpaca, and it took hardly any yarn at all. Um, my gauge was a little tighter um, but I decided to go with it because the first size in the pattern is 0 to 6 months and I wanted a proper newborn size sweater so the neckline's nice and stretchy, hopefully it will go over a newborn baby's head um, and it's got these lovely details so the um, hem and the cuffs got a little bit of colour work in with the ribbing and then, so this is my second colour work sweater. And here is the improvement in my, in my progress. I, I haven't got the other sweater to show you right here, but it's, the stitches are definitely more even. The colour work's much more even. Um, this time, so last time I did colour work, I did um, a sweater with dancing T-Rexes across and the, Pattern advice is you to go up a needle size for the colour work. But I decided that that meant, well, I did it for that project, but I felt that it just, I felt that I wasn't somebody whose colour work got tighter. So it just made it look looser. So I haven't done this on this pattern and it seems to have worked quite nicely. Um, I've deliberately chosen colours that are fairly unisex, so hopefully mum and dad will be quite happy to put the baby in, whether it's a girl or a boy. There's a few bits where I need to just improve, but it's, it's just a case of practice, and I do think my colour work is improving. I'm really looking forward to make, doing some colour work with some sticky yarn, um, because this is alpaca, and while it looks like it should be sticky, because it's, it's got a real halo on it, which I don't know if you can see, and you can see a few bits up here. Um, it doesn't seem to really, the colour work doesn't really, um, sorry the zoom's rubbish on this, it doesn't really blend into each other, that's not really the right word, but people who knit a lot of colour work will know what I mean. So I'm excited to try with some really rustic yarn and some colour work eventually and see how that goes. So I'm really, really pleased with this Icefall sweater. Um, by Tin Can Knits and of course the pattern goes right up to adult sizes so I will definitely be making this one day for myself or somebody else I love. So I'm really pleased with that. Finished object number one. Ta-da! My next finished object is my shawl, my free shawl, which oh my goodness I thought it was never going to end and then suddenly I got a massive burst of enthusiasm <laughs> after the last podcast. Um, I was really excited to cast, I always do this, do you guys do this? The first bit of a project goes really, really quickly and I'm really enthusiastic and motivated. 
then the middle it slows right down and then towards the last third quarter or so I just speed right back up again. And the thing about these shawls that I like to knit, the shape of the shawls I like to knit is you start at this narrow edge and, this, and the, the rows are very quick and then you get to the last bit and the rows are very long. Anyway, it's done and I am so pleased with it. This is probably one of my favourite shawls. It's certainly my husband's favourite shawl, although he does tend to say that about every shawl I finish. This is, um, so it's mosaic knitting. Mosaic knitting means that you slip stitches to get the pattern. Um, and although it looks like colour work, if you haven't done mosaic before, you, you work the same the one colour each row and you slip stitches from the row before to get the pattern. Um, and this is a really particular sort of mosaic knitting because you, um, well for a start you slip different numbers of stitches. You often slip with the yarn in front. You can see these bits here is where the yarn slipped in front. And so that you get this pattern on the top of the, you know, you get, you know, the white on the green background and the green on the white background. And then also you do these lovely long slipped bits, which then get pulled up on the couple of rows later. And so you get this really lovely pattern. I mean, it's just fantastic. The edge is great and mirrors the, um, what's this called? I called bind off. Um, and that mirrors the beginning of the shawl, which, um, which you start here. And you start with the eye cord. You, it's not really an eye cord, but it, it, it gets that similar, that similar look to it. So I made this with John Arben Yarns Knit by Numbers. It's the first time I've used John Arben Yarns, and I'm really, really pleased with it. I will definitely be using this again. In fact, I have three skeins of a colour to knit um, a Hilda Bear shawl with at some point in the future. But this, um, yeah, I am very pleased with it. It's very, very warm and thick. It feels much more like a DK weight shawl. It's not, it's fingering. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased. Looking, almost looking forward to the winter so I can wear it. So with regards to mosaic knitting, just to, I said that I had a couple of past objects to show you. So I won't talk about them in too much depth because I've got a lot to talk about this time. But I've got two shawls um, to show you that I've knit with mosaic. Um, and they've both got slightly different ways of doing it. So this shawl is the Ephemeris shawl by Deborah Gerhard. And I knit this with Rosie's Moments yarn, which is a UK hand dyer. And it's in her merino silk and a merino silk yak blend. So two different colours. And you can see this has a very different effect. So this shawl starts at the bottom with this night colour. And then you bring in the autumn leaves colour. And you can see that all the, you slip these stitches from the rows before and they um, create this well, mosaic effect, funnily enough. Then here, this section's really lovely, the mosaics knit. This is with um, the, oh, I can't remember how she made this effect, but I think it's fantastic. And then it's reversed, so you've got the night on the autumn leaves, and again, the night on top of the autumn leaves, and then autumn leaves at the end. This I love wearing. It's, this sort of pattern just looks so effective on, which I will do, but usually I end up knocking my mic when I do this. So it looks really effective on. I like wearing this. If you could hear that with the mic. <laughs> so that, that's my um, ephemeris shawl. I would recommend that pattern. And I'd recommend the yarn as well. It's really lovely. I'm really pleased with the colours. And then this other um, mosaic pattern that I made is Terzetto Shawl by Lisa Hannes. This is one that I finished relatively recently, actually. Um, this is made with Bellica yarns in three different colours. This had a very slow start. Look at all this. All this garter stitch. 
da, da, da. but then here comes the mosaic and so here it's used to make a kind of traditional type mosaic pattern which is really clever and some lace and then there's more mosaic of the other the third color so you can see you can do quite a lot with mosaic knitting and if you've never done it before I really recommend you have a go be brave don't be afraid of mosaic knitting and um, they often have charts so that can be a little bit scary for some knitters but really definitely have a go at it because this sort of pattern is relatively simple once you've done a pattern like that or like this you will absolutely be able to tackle a pattern like this and in fact I think that a, a relatively confident beginner could tackle a, a pattern like this anyway because they're so well written um, Lisa Hannah's made both these patterns so she's definitely a fan Terzetto and Freeshaw she's definitely a fan of the mosaic and she writes really really well so if you're really if you're interested in having a go at some mosaic then I can recommend her um, and this pattern was very well written as well Deborah Gerhardt um, I did have a quick scoot through my other projects and couldn't find anything else that was um, knit in mosaic but I definitely recommend you have a go at that. So um, what do I talk about next? I think we're going to move on to my um, works in progress. So uh, my camera seems to like to turn off after about 15 minutes. So we're at 11 now. So I'm going to pause it now and then I'll tell you about my works in progress. So I'm back. <laughs> Didn't take long. Um, I have to I felt I needed to put this in because last time my husband watched the podcast, he said, oh, it, it sort of um, skips a bit in places. And I said, well, that's where I've had to splice the bits of video together. So I thought if I just tell you that I'm cutting out and then coming back again, then um, we won't need to worry about that. So these, my first whip is a pair of socks and that is these uh, Juniper Socks by Helen Stewart. I'm not doing the contrast heel and toe. And I did talk about these last time and I had... Um, worked enough of them to show you um, these are in an, one of my project bags from my mum so I had knit I think about this much last time and um, they're knit I've got loads of this they're knit with blue bell yarns um, and this is 100% white faced woodland um, the UK hand dyer this is and she dyes a lot of um, rustic yarns and uh, special breeds so I'd done about this much and then before so about a few days ago I'd got as far as about here I had finished the heel decreases and I was ready to start the foot but when I got to that point I found I didn't have enough stitches oh, no had too many stitches according to the pattern because um, Helen's really great and she writes every single row how many stitches you should have left every, it's on a table um, the, the pattern is so clearly written I mean you can't go wrong she tells you how much yarn you should have left at each point so you can check to see you'll have enough so that was really helpful because I knew that I didn't have enough I had too many stitches but I couldn't work out why I had too many stitches I couldn't uh, I wasn't sure what I'd done differently now, had I made a modification on purpose and forgotten to write it in the notes, I figured I had two ways of looking at this. Either I could just carry on, fudge it, but then I knew when I got to the second sock, I wouldn't know how to modify it so that it was the same as this one. Um, so I decided that I needed to rip back, and I ripped all the way back to the peel turn and to where I'd picked up these stitches. And... Now, I don't know if this is an error I've made or a modific modification I made that I didn't write down um, or whether the pattern's not right. I suspect it's my fault, not the pattern's fault, because the pattern's so well written and she's such an experienced designer. However, she says to pick up um, 12 stitches along the heel flap I think she says 12, but I had 14 loops, I think. 
So I picked up, uh, what I'd done is I'd just picked up every loop and one extra in the corner and hadn't actually counted them. So that's fine. When I came back round, I picked up all the loops. It, it doesn't matter if you pick up too many stitches at this point um, because you just do more decreases um, until it's the right number of stitches for the foot. And in fact, that's what I've learned I need to do for my socks anyway because I have quite a high instep. So um, it may be that I made that modification already, knowing that I would need a deeper heel flap. I don't know. Anyway, what I've done this time is I've done the same as what I think I did previously and actually wrote notes so that when I knit the second sock, it um, matches this one. But um, it, I'm OK with it. I've, I was a bit frustrated for a while and they went into timeout. It went into timeout. But it's, it's come out of time out now and I'm sort of working on it slowly again. I'm working on it slowly because it's not my most... I'm really excited about my other two projects at the moment. <laughs> um, I've got um, a stitch marker mark in my beginning of round, which I don't know where it came from because my mum gave them to me. And to the other thing my mum gave me, and I'm afraid I can't remember whether these came from either, is a packet of loads and loads of these tiny little stitch markers and she bought them for me for when I'm doing colour work patterns so that as I go round each um, pattern repeat, there's plenty of stitch markers to mark where they are. So um, they're where my decreases are. So I've learned a lesson about documenting my modifications as I go. I should know more about, better about documentation. My job, uh, half of my job is documentation and saying to my team, please document everything you do. <laughs> so I should know better. Anyway. I am really pleased with these socks. I think they're going to be toasty warm. I love the pattern with these little zigzags. So, um, okay, I've learned a lesson. I will do better next time. Let me pop those away. And then my next work in progress is um, a sweater for me. And this is my first colour work sweater for me. This is in a new project bag that my mum made me, an enormous project bag, because I don't like stuffing my projects in really tight. And this is the Ingalls sweater by Boyland Knitworks or Caitlin Hunter. Um, there's a um, there's a picture of it. Oh, sorry, in the court up there. Um, I'm sure many of you know the Ingalls sweater. It's got um, obviously this bit of colour work and it's got eyelets underneath under, underneath the colour work, just above it, and also there's a few bits throughout it, little triangle bits of colour work. So this is obviously a very well-known sweater. A lot of people have knit it, but it's quite simple in terms of colour work. And... Here is my version. I am really, really pleased with how this is going. It's meant to be a very oversized sweater, but I'm not sure how oversized it will be. I think that this will all, I hope this will all stretch out. It's alpaca, so it should be quite drapey. I'm knitting it with Drops Alpaca, and I'm using the um, same colour I use for my Dancing T-Rex sweater, which is the grey, and then um, a purple. So this is colour 6 and this is colour 12. I've got loads of the 12 because I originally bought all this stuff for a different sweater and then um, it was a Isabel Kramer pattern, the Manu sweater and I bought it all for that and then I used my Dancing T-Rex sweater for a swatch and it was way out. It was so far out that I was going to have to go up probably about three, two or three needle sizes to get the right gauge and the reason for that there is a simple reason <laughs> the manu sweater is meant to be knitted in aran or worsted weight and this is dk weight now i got this because there were a few patterns a few examples of the manu sweater knit in dk weight so i thought it would work but i thought i'm just going to get such a, a holy fabric that it wasn't really what i wanted so i looked for another pattern instead and that's how i came up with this one so I did um, Woolly Wormhead's 
alternate cable cast on to cast it on, which I think has given a really nice finish to the neckline. Uh, I haven't made any other mods. This is the medium size I'm making. Um, and yeah, the, I think the colour works improving still but again it's on alpaca so again I'm not quite sure how that's gonna you know I think it'll start looking better my colour work when it's on the right sort of yarn. The um, eyelet sections have worked out well and I think again what, this needs blocking to show these sections. The only thing that I wasn't quite sure how to handle and I'm not sure if I've handled it how I'd like is that these um, I don't know if you're going to see. So there's an eyelet section there, and then there's eyelet sections here. And because they're where the colour work is, you've got strands of colour work running behind. I did go on to Ravelry and find out what other people had done. And part of me wonders whether I'd rather have left them and just not had those eyelet holes. Um, people on Ravelry in the, in the thread seem to say that most people just lived with it, lived with the fact that strands were running behind. Um, anyway, that's what I've done, done, I've decided to live with it. And in fact, I tried it on the other day um, to see how it fit and it did fit really well. But you couldn't see, you couldn't, you couldn't tell that there was, there was yarn running behind these bits. So I think it's going to be fine. So yeah, I'm really pleased with these. This, I've done a third, I think, of this section. So I've got two more about 23 centimetres or so to go and then I do the um, ribbing at the bottom and then I'll bind it off and then it'll be the sleeves which I shall do two at a time. You can't really see the shape of it because I've got it on quite a sort of a smaller cable length than I, you know, I could have it on a much longer cable length but I quite like that it, it pulls it together so it's easier to move around as I get to each, each section. If you notice everything's just gone a little quieter, the oven, I turned it off just before I started and the fan's only just switched off. <laughs> um, and I don't think there's much else to say about this. I'm really, really excited though and it's growing really quick. Obviously I've done this in less than three weeks. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm knitting it on quite short needles because I, I am struggling to get my hands completely better. Um, and I found that these were helping. So these are four millimeter, higher, higher sharps, which are my absolute favorite needles. Um, and I'm using my little teeny tiny needle case that my dad made me. So that is um, really successful so far. I'm really excited to have that finished and uh, obviously wouldn't really want to be wearing it this time of year. It's a bit warm for that kind of thing. But, um, but uh, yeah, I will be definitely be wearing that in the winter and I can't wait. So I'm just going to pause it again because I'm coming up to 11 and a half minutes and then I'll tell you about my third work in progress and some acquisitions and what I'm going to knit next. Do you know what's really strange is that when I pause the video, for some reason I feel we need to wait for a couple of seconds before I <laughs> turn it back on again. Anyway, very strange. So, my next project is one that I've also started since the last project, and that is not so successful. This is the Coastal Fog uh, Shawl by Callie Monster. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with the pattern. It's written really well, um, and as you can see, it looks absolutely pigging beautiful. However, the pattern requires the use of slipped stitches, not mosaic because it's all in one colour and this is how far I've got. I'll tell you what I'm knitting it with in a second. Um, I don't know if you can see there, it uses these slip stitches to create this zigzag effect, that's the first bit of the sort of patterny stuff. It looks okay, she does say at the end of the pattern it requires a very aggressive block and I can see that because this um, is curling right up. Um, so that's fine, it's got an eye cord edge and doesn't this yarn look amazing? Really pleased with the yarn, definitely don't have a problem with that. But the issue really for me is not what it looks like as how it is to knit. 
me personally, I'm not enjoying having to focus so much on the tensioning of these stitches that I'm slipping. I'm slipping two at a time on this section and later on slipping, slipping four at a time. And you have to obviously make sure that the yarn is not too tight across the, the slip. You slip it at the front, which is how you get these bits going across. And I'm just not in, enjoying that part of the knitting. And seeing as I am at this point probably, and I've got all this to knit with the rows getting longer and longer and longer with that slipped stitch pattern, I've just, I have decided to give up and frog this, um, which is a bit of a shame because I've done a lot of work on it so far, but it's not really doing, and I, you have to, in there's process and product knitting, isn't there? And I'm kind of half and half really, I, which is the ideal blend, I guess. <laughs> I love being excited about the product I'm going to get at the end, and I am excited about this shawl. But you have to enjoy the work as well, and I'm not enjoying the work of this shawl, which is a shame. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with the pattern. It is written so, so clearly. I really recommend it. If you think that you might enjoy doing this slip stitch um, idea, this pattern's brilliantly written. It's very, very clear. I haven't come across any errors or anything yet. Um, so definitely go ahead and have a look at that if you think that's for you. I'm knitting it with, well I'm not for much longer knitting it with, um, my, this is from the Knitting Shed, Ainsworth and Prin, the Knitting Shed, and it's Merino Silk 4 ply, sorry, Merino Silk Single 4 ply, and this colour is Mrs Dalloway, and this colour is Brinjal, so this was going to be the darker colour. I love the yarn, I've got no issues with the yarn whatsoever. So. I decided this morning at approximately half past two because I woke in the night and couldn't get back to sleep and so I very naughtily decided to switch my phone on and look for something different to make with this yarn. And I have decided to make this. This is going to be my first next cast on, which I shall probably cast on pretty soon after filming this. And that is the Burnt Sugar Shawl by um, Laura Rhineback, and I'm, I am very excited. There's no other photos on this, but it's got, um, so this darker section, which is, you start with the darker section, has got a kind of um, diamond pattern on it, which is made with pearl stitches, and then, and then the paler color has got the same diamond pattern follows through, except it's done with lace instead. So it should be really interesting to work on. Considering my, sweater, I'm pointing down here because it's down here, is just stocking stitch at the moment. I'm thinking that knitting a shawl that requires a little bit more concentration is probably a good idea. So that's um, the plan for this yarn. And in fact, fairly soon after filming this, <laughs> I shall be frogging this and starting the burnt sugar shawl instead. Um, which I am feeling excited about. I think when you, once you just make it, the worst stage, I don't know about you, but the worst stage is deciding that you're not gonna continue with the project. Once you've decided and you've decided to frog it, it's fine. Anyway, so that shawl and the next incarnation of that wool is in my bees project bag. I am trying to persuade my mum to make these and sell them, but she's not there yet. <laughs> So that's my next cast on, my first next cast on. And then I've got two acquisitions and another cast on. So my first acquisition is, sorry about the rustling, I should have taken it out of the bag first, is this linen yarn. Um, this is called Texier Yarn C4 Linen and it's n out of print. <laughs> <laughs> discontinued. Um, it's in their buttercream colourway. Now I inherited this. I say inherited, that's not really the right word. My mum passed this on to me. Um, she had bought it to knit a shawl with, a summer shawl, 
and she hadn't enjoyed working with it and there's absolutely masses of it as you can see it doesn't say how much here but I mean clearly a lot so um, she didn't enjoy knitting with it however she thought I might enjoy making a summer sweater or something with it so I think that is what I'm going to do I'm, I'm thinking I know that Julie Weisenberger of uh, Coco Knits has got quite a few really pretty um, designs meant for linen yarns. It's, I could obviously make something quite big with it. I don't know. If, if anyone's got any suggestions for me, please tell me because um, it, I have searched Ravelry and I've clicked on linen for the fabric on the advanced search and I've looked at um, patterns that are designed for linen and I've looked at projects that have been made with linen and it doesn't really, it's not really getting the information I want to get because anybody who's used mixed yarns is and, and any of the yarn has got a bit of linen in it is clicking linen and of course the vast majority of the patterns, uh, the projects that have been made at least if they use linen, they use linen plus wool or linen plus cotton or something. So it, I'm struggling to find the patterns to choose from. So if you've got any suggestions, please tell me. You can either tell me here or on Instagram. Um, I won't be making anything out of this for a little while because I've got a lot of projects in my queue. So possibly for next summer? I don't know. I mean, if someone suggests a pattern and I just completely fall in love with it, it might, it might scooch up the queue a little bit. <laughs> so that's one of my acquisitions. And then my next acquisition is um, some of this stuff. This is Drops Kid Silk in a new colourway called Sage Green. And I've got six balls of it. Now, I have bought this for a specific reason, because I want to knit the Love Notes sweater by Tin Can Knits, and I want to make it with some other yarn that was passed to me by my mum that she decided, oh no, I think actually she might have bought this for me um, from uh, someone on Ravelry, bought it second hand. I think she spotted it and thought, that's a sweater quantity. It was when I was just starting to think about um, making sweaters. And it is this, um, here we are, it's Holst Garn Noble, and it's four full skeins. Here we are, Holst Garn. And it's, so Holst Garn Noble is 95% Geelong Ould. Is Geelong a sort of sheep? And Ould, I think, is wool. And 5% cashmere. I know what cashmere is. And it's in the colourway Blue Stone. So I had these four sitting in my stash since I decided I was going to start knitting sweaters and I couldn't find the right thing for it. I did try a swatch for a couple of things, but although it is, it's light fingering weight, so it's 666 metres in 100 grams, um, it actually looks to me more like lace weight. Um, it's very, very thin and it's not... It actually looks more like cotton, believe it or not. I'm kind of assuming that when you block it, it, it um, blooms. It, ha it looks like it doesn't have any give in it, but it does actually. So I was a bit flummoxed as to what to make with this. I don't have enough for any of the people, any of the projects or patterns that are designed specially for this. Anyway, then I saw, I remembered that a lot of people are putting, um, excuse me, yarns like this with a, a sort of kid silk type thing, um, mohair. Hang on. So I thought, wow, why don't I see if I can get hold of some mohair that's a similar colour. So this is called blue stone, but I think it's a very greeny blue. Um... And then this is obviously a sage green, the kid silk stuff. So I don't know if this is going to show, but when I put them together, I think that they're going to be all right. I think they're going to 
Um, I think that the sage green will tone down the blue a little bit. I think it'll make a really nice grey green blue sweater. So that's the plan. Um, and I do have enough for the Love Note sweater by Tim Canlitz. So this will be my next sweater cast on. Du -du -du. Um, and I know from knitting this that Tin Can Knits makes amazing patterns. I have knit other patterns from them before. So I think that's going to be really fun. It's, um, well, I'll, I'll put a picture up, but it's got a, um, a lace yoke rather than a colour work yoke. I can't remember if I worked out if I had enough for the sleeve version or whether I would be making the short sleeve version, but we shall see. So when I finished my um, Ingle sweater, I will be making the Love Note sweater with this. So that's my next cast on. And that is it. That is it. I didn't think I was there yet. Um, so I'm just going to... I'm at, <laughs> Sorry about being a bit flummoxed. I thought I had something else to talk to you about, but I don't. So I'm just at the end of that, uh, I'm at 12 minutes, nearly 13 now, so I'm just going to pause it again and restart because I just want to talk to you about a podcast, which I haven't done the last two sessions, but uh, episodes, but I quite like to do that. So um, I'll say goodbye and then we'll say hello again. And hello again. <laughs> um, so the podcast I really want to highlight today is another long, t well, this is a, a very long-term podcaster um, who is also... A very very gentle soul and who I'm completely potty about even though her aesthetic is not really like mine at all I just love listening to her I love her accent <laughs> I love how she describes what she's what she's doing and she just seems like the nicest kindest person and it is Isabel of Fluffy Fibres I think I have referred to her a couple of times in the past um, it would be a dream come true if Isabel were to watch this podcast. Um, I am slowly working my way through her back catalogue and um, I th she's just lovely. She's such a nice person. She really owns her style. She sews. She's aiming for her handmade wardrobe. I mean, she must have a full, a very full wardrobe by this point. Um, but she, she loves pinks and purples and blues and pretty and elegant. Um, I kind of like the more earthy stuff. <laughs> and as you can see from the things I've made and shown, I don't really have a colour that I especially am drawn to. I've recently, um, well, literally finished yesterday, I decided to reskein all the leftover bits of wool I had because I realised that they would be better in a skein and also they look better in a skein and I was right they look amazing I'm so chuffed with them but I I know that some people when they do this they um they find that they realise what their colour is because that's the yarn they choose all the time and my mum certainly has a, a colour which is um, blues um, and greens I just don't. I'm obviously an eclectic colour lover <laughs> and I'll go for any colour, any colour um, as long as I fall in love with it, which I do tend to do quite often because I really love colour. So I'm not like Isabel in that because Isabel certainly does have her favourite colours and Isabel loves, is very elegant and she has her clothes uh, beautifully fitted and um, tailored exquisitely. And she's got the most amazing hair. <laughs> and um, yeah, I kind of like these more roomy linen clothes. <laughs> and earthy colours if I do go for a particular colour and earthy designs we're not very similar but I just think she's amazing I think she's really fantastic um, and yes yeah, so kind and lovely so 
go and check out her podcast. She's fantastic. And she's got loads and loads of episodes. If you've never found her before, which I think I find very um, unbelievable. If you have, if you're watching this podcast, you certainly should be watching that one. You certainly should have discovered her before. But if you haven't discovered her, go and look at her podcast. She's got very many episodes and they're fantastic. So I think that's it from me today. Um, thank you very, very much for joining me. I hope you're all really well. I hope you're staying safe in these horrible times where in the UK at least we're watching our numbers creeping up again. Thankfully not our numbers of hospital admissions, which is such a relief. Um, but yeah, please do keep staying safe. Um, wear your masks when you're out. I think people look quite cool in masks and some pretty funky ones out there. Um, and yeah, please come back next episode, which will hopefully be in around three weeks and click like, click subscribe. If you want to, um, be high, be alerted when the next video is up and, um, yeah, I'll say goodbye. Goodbye.